So Terrifier was recommended to me by one of you guys in the comments and I searched up the movie and once I saw that black and white clown, I was already in. I also heard it was a throwback to like 80 slashers. So I was automatically drawn into this movie and yeah, so this is the next movie I will be going through the plot of and explaining the ending. This time I made sure to explain the ending. I know a lot of people argue I don't explain the ending. So in this one, I actually did try to make a segment where I get more in depth in the ending and talk about what I think it means about the clown in this particular movie. And yeah, I hope you guys like that. I also got this big new O light to try to help me not look so yellow. I hope it works and I hope it looks 10 times better. That was the goal of the ring light. With that getting said, let's get right into the plot. Terrifier begins with showing us a small TV that is displaying an interview. The host, Monica Brown, is interviewing the only survivor of the Miles County Massacre, which happened on Halloween, exactly one year ago from this day. The lady's face is completely disfigured, and we learn she was attacked by the infamous killer known as Art the Clown. Allegedly, Art the Clown died, however, his body went missing. The victim declares that Art the Clown is dead, and she saw it happen. Right at this moment, Art breaks the TV and gets on his costume. We then see the interviewer in the backstage room where she is talking on the phone with her lover. She basically disses on the victim survivor and that was a mistake. Upon hearing some sounds, the interviewer looks around and is attacked by the victim and her eyes get gouged out, making her resemble the victim in the disfigurement. Then the movie cuts to two girls, our main character, Tara, played by Jenna Cannell, and her friend, Don, played by Catherine Corcoran. They are leaving a Halloween party and are very drunk. They decide if they get some food to eat, they will sober up and be able to drive home. During this, Tara notices Art the Clown standing and watching them. Tara tells her friend, but Don is not taking it seriously and yells at him. Tara tells Don to cut it out and is about to apologize, however, Art disappeared. The girls go to a nearby pizzeria and sit down and talk. Then Art the Clown enters and sits at a nearby table. He stares Tara down while making weird gestures in a very impressive and effective scene. Don goes over to Art and takes a picture with him. Also, Art gives Tara a ring and then he goes to the bathroom. The owner makes sure the girls are okay and goes to the bathroom to see what Art is doing. Clearly, Art did something bad when the owner kicks him out of the store. The girls walk back to their car but see their tire is slashed and busted. Classic slasher horror trope. We then cut back to the pizzeria where we see an employee cleaning up the bathroom, revealing Art smeared his shit all over the walls. I think Art was the most drunk. Not even the girls did this. The scene switches back to the girls where Tara calls her sister Vicky to pick them up. When the employee leaves and yells for his boss, he sees his boss was killed and carved into a jack-o'-lantern, and Art steps out of the shadows. In an amazing scene, we hear Don telling a very concerned Tara how harmless Art was. Simultaneously, while Don is reassuring Tara the clown is not a danger, we see Art aggressively stabbing the employee to death. While waiting for Vicky to pick them up, Tara has to go to the bathroom, so she goes to a nearby building and convinces the guy to let her in. Back to Dawn. Dawn is in the car by herself and hears on the radio that there is a black and white clown that is wanted and is dangerous. She then makes the connection that it was the clown they saw earlier. Also, an ambulance drives past her. Then Art gets in the passenger seat of the car. Hey, could you send me that picture from earlier? Oh yeah, what is your number? Tara is leaving the bathroom and hears a strange cat sound. She enters the room where the sounds were coming from and is startled by a woman. This woman is only known as the cat lady and is extremely crazy. She has a baby doll that she treats like an actual infant. Tara makes up an excuse to leave and tries to go to the exit. However, when she gets to the door that would lead her to the car, Art is standing right in front of it and it appears he put a lock on it. There is a really great moment where everything is silent and Art and Tara just stare at each other frozen. Very effective scene. This was a great job and I give props to the directors and writers because this scene was very effective. 
Art breaks the silence and jumps at Tara to which she runs for her life. After several scenes of hiding and trying to escape, Art injects Tara with some sedatives that cause her to go unconscious. Unfortunately, the janitor did not hear anything since he had headphones on. Tara wakes up strapped and tied to a chair. Art starts to threaten and tease Tara with different weapons, such as a handsaw that he puts to her neck. We see there is something in front of Tara that is hidden behind a curtain. Art pulls the curtain down and reveals Dawn is hanging upside down by her legs with her hands tied behind her back. She is also nearly naked with only underwear on. Art rips her underwear off and then in a very graphic scene, proceeds to cut her in half starting between the legs this scene is super graphic and uncomfortable i mean this scene is so uncomfortable and it shows the whole thing this might be the goriest scene i've ever seen in a movie it is insane while Art is busy cutting Dawn in half, Tara starts to break free of the chair. Right before Art can get to her, Tara hits him and then while he's on the ground takes a nearby knife and stabs him in the back. Then while she can, she runs away. Art enters the room that Tara is hiding in and has a knife at the ready. Tara was prepared and sneaks up behind Art with a big wooden plank and hits Art several times in the head and stomach. Art falls on the floor and right before Tara can give the final blow, Art pulls out a gun and shoots her in the leg. Art shoots Tara again and this time in the face, but right before he could shoot her for good, his gun runs out of ammo and he leaves her there on the floor barely alive. After this scene, we see Vicky pull up in front of the building and Art goes back to his weapons bag to look for ammo. Vicky gets out of the car and goes to the front door of the building, but it's locked. Then we see Art found some ammo and loads up his gun. Vicky calls Tara to see if everything is okay. Unfortunately for her, Art has both of the girls' phones, so when Vicky texts Tara to tell her she is at the building, Art sees it as a way to lure in another victim. Art makes a very smart move and texts Vicky using Don's phone, saying that Tara is sick and that she should come around to the back. While this is a very smart decision by Art, I'm not sure if it works only because I don't know how Art got the password to get into Dawn's phone to send the message. Either her phone was already unlocked or it's possible that it was fingerprint triggered so he just walked over to her dead body and just took that finger and went <laughs> Vicky listens to the text and heads to the back. Art, excited that he has another victim, walks over to the nearly dead Tara and shoots her in the forehead, killing her. Then out of nowhere, shoots her another four to five times, making her face unrecognizable. The camera reveals that the cat lady saw the murder, to which Art smiles at her and waves. The cat lady, scared for her life, runs away. We see Vicky made it to the back of the building and she waits. The cat lady goes goes to the janitor in a startling way and tries to warn him about how there is a clown that is killing people in the basement. However, the janitor refuses to believe her and runs off. The janitor goes downstairs where he hears the voice of Vicky. He tries to call a co-worker to tell him something is wrong, but Art gets to him first and kills him and then smashes his phone. We then see Vicky roaming around some more. The cat lady runs back to her stuff and notices her baby doll is missing and she treats it like she is missing a legit infant. Vicky keeps on looking and can't get in through the back door either. There is a cool easter egg as it says Art on the door. The cat lady sees Art has her doll and she walks up to him and takes an ethical approach. She tells him there is good somewhere within his heart and just thinks he needs a little love as she calls it a mother's touch. She holds Art in her arms. The guy that the janitor called on his phone pulls up to the building with his janitor equipment, but can't get into the building because every door is locked. Vicky has had enough and calls Dawn for the last time. However, when she calls Dawn, she can hear Dawn's ringtone. She follows the sound down some steps. Vicky sees Dawn's body that is cut in half and runs. She then hears a girl screaming down some steps. Assuming it is Tara, she slowly walks down the stairs and sees Tara on the floor. However, we know it cannot be Tara because she is dead. 
She looks over and sees the cat lady. However, the cat lady's breasts have been cut off and most of her scalp is gone. Then it is revealed that Art is wearing the cat lady's hair to pretend to be Tara. Vicky runs but the doors are locked and we see Art is wearing the breasts of the cat lady. Vicky finds a nearby closet and hides in it. Art is messing with her but he hears honking which is coming from the trunk of the co-worker. Instead of leaving, the co-worker finds a spare key under the rug to the door. The co-worker rocks around and notices the cat lady's doll on the floor. When he kneels down to pick it up, Art comes from behind and stabs him in the top of the head and then with another knife cuts his head off and then kicks it like a soccer ball. Vicky slowly creeps out of the closet and tries to leave but the door is locked. While she is trying to open it, we see Art riding a tricycle around and is back in his uniform. Not gonna lie, it was good to see Art back in uniform. I was sick and tired of seeing him in a wig and it just annoyed me so I'm glad to see him back in his costume. When Art rides in the opposite direction, Vicky runs and hides behind a car. She then starts to walk backwards till she gets to a new hallway. Art sneaks up behind her with some plastic wrap and tries to suffocate her. Vicky breaks a hole through the plastic and runs to a new area. The next scene shows the janitor is still alive. Vicky eventually gets to a room where she sees Tara's dead body and mourns. Art comes up behind her and starts whipping her with shards of metal. The janitor sneaks up behind Art and then knocks him out and helps Vicky up and leads her to a room where he locks the door. Next, he calls the police and tells Vicky that he will take her to the emergency room. When they leave the room and get to the door where they will exit, Art attacks the janitor and then smashes his face in. He then leads toward Vicky who breaks the lock off the door and breaks free of Art by stabbing him in the eye. She finds a way to get back into the building and Art grabs her by her hair but she breaks free. He then starts trolling her. He eventually leaves her alone but then hits her with the truck and starts eating her face face. Finally, the police arrive and Art commits suicide by putting a bullet into his mouth. When the investigation team is dealing with the dead bodies, it is revealed Art is still alive. The very end shows Vicky with her family and it is revealed that she was the survivor in the interview at the beginning of the movie, meaning the whole movie is a flashback. The end. So what did the end mean? The first important thing the end revealed is Art will always win. Throughout the whole movie, I was always curious if Art could be killed. The end revealed that even if Art puts a bullet through his own mouth, he will still live. An easy slasher to compare him to would be Michael Myers. Just like Michael, Art appears to be a man behind a mask, however is invincible. Another similarity to Michael would be that he feels pain. Throughout multiple scenes, we see Art can feel pain, but he is back on his feet very shortly shortly. They both attack on Halloween and don't say a word. Also, the end revealed that the entire movie is a flashback. At the beginning of the movie, we are told about the Miles County Massacre. The end reveals that the whole movie was the Miles County Massacre. During the interview, the disfigured woman claims that Art is dead, despite numerous accounts of sightings. This makes sense because at the end of the movie, Art commits suicide in front of Vicky, meaning she would believe he is dead. Vicky does not know about Art's crazy healing powers. Overall, the twist at the end was a fun addition, and I'm glad they put it in there. All right, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This one took me quite a bit, but I grinded out the past few days to make sure I could get this video out as soon as possible. I'm going to start trying to do these videos more often. I'm on break, so I have a lot more time, and that's kind of why I could pump this video out fairly quickly, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I will be reviewing this movie in a separate video, so if you guys are curious to know my opinions on this movie, I will definitely share those in another video just because I know some people aren't really in it for the review and just care to know the plot and just care to kind of know what the ending meant and stuff so for those people this is all they need for a video but for those of you that want to know my opinion kind of give a more in-depth review kind of talking you know using film terminology and stuff that will be up shortly but thank you guys for watching leave your suggestions down below and I hope you guys had a great Christmas and thank you for watching peace